In this video, we're going to show you how to replace a reverse cable on a hammerhead, a carter, and an American Sport Works cart with external reverse. The first thing we're going to do is remove the seat, and to do that, you have two bolts underneath that are 13 millimeter, and you're going to take those out, and it'll slide off your front slides, and we lay it over on the other seat. Then we're going to remove the rear tire. The next step that we're going to do, we're going to remove this handle to get the cable out of it. It's an easy way to do this and you need it off to reinstall it. So we're going to take a jam nut off the back and remove this bolt. Then we're going to remove the loop out of the cable end. And we're going to pull this cable through out of the brackets, the zip tie, and remove it from the back of the cart right here. Now to remove the cable ball from the re reverse assembly, Scott's going to show you pulling out the cable. You have a snap ring clip on it that he's going to push back with his fingers. He has a, another groove behind the groove that keeps that in the ball in the slot that's going to lock it out to keep it from falling inside the reverse assembly while he removes that cable. Now he's got the cable out. He's going to unscrew it from the end of the sleeve and then we'll install the new cable. When we were removing the cable, we were showing you how to put the clip back here and hold this in position. And we did have to put a new reverse assembly on this unit, but they're the same style going back. We're going to screw our cap back on. And that, that's your easiest adjustment for your cable, is this cap right here. It's going to be your quickest, easiest instead of using your cable in adjustment. Now what Scott's going to do, he's going to position that ball in your groove, in your socket, in your reverse assembly. And then we're going to pull the snap ring back over the groove that keeps that ball in socket. Okay. He's going to go ahead and slide the housing up on here at this point. And we can let it free float as we go to the front to pull our cable back in position. Now we're going to route our cable back up through the center. We'll zip tie this here in a little bit. We're going to lay our cable over into our grooves where they go. Now we're going to install the compression spring back on the cable and slide it into position in the holder. And this is the part that makes the job a lot easier while you take that handle off to start with. You're going to rehook your ball inside your handle. You're going to spin it up into position and now reinstall your compression spring. If you have the factory bolt still in this unit, your compression bolt is only going to go through far enough to get a full thread on your jam nut. And what you're looking for right here on this is that when you pull back this cable, this handle, that you're not completely out of compression here to where it's wedging you and you can't get it past. And this feels real good the way it is, so Scott's going to put the jam nut on it and lock it down. You're going to set the tension in the cable. Scott's pulling back on his cable now to see how much slack he has in it. You want about a quarter inch of slack still in it, eighth inch to a quarter inch. 
you just want a little bit of slack left in there and you're going to lock down your jam nut on it. Now once again he's going to pull his handle to test and be sure the pressure feels good on the cable and not, not too tight is what we're looking for. And then after we're done here we'll run the unit and show you it's working in both directions and how to do that. We're going to come back to the back. Scott's going to slip his, case back, his cover back on and put the screws in it to hold it in position. And then he's going to come in and tighten down his jam nut here as well as up here. Now we're going to put our zip tie in the middle of the cable and re-zip tie up your brake and your hydraulic hose with this. We like to use two zip ties for a backup. That keeps them off the ground and keeps them from hanging up on brushes bad. Now we're ready to start up the unit and we're going to run it forward. You must completely stop the unit by using your brake to go to reverse and show that we're engaging fully in both directions. Now that our engine is running, we're going to give it a little bit of throttle and here you can see it's going forward. We're going to bring it to a complete stop using our brake pedal. Now we're going to shift to reverse and you see it's still going forward so we're going to have to tighten our cable just a hair bit more. And that's what Scott's showing you here. He's turning it clockwise which is bringing the cable housing outward. Now we're going to go back to reverse and we're going to try it again. There we go. Now we're going to stop the engine again using our brake. We're going to go to forward. We had no grind. We can see we're going forward. And we're going back to reverse one more time. Now we're going to kill our engine and at this point we're ready to tighten our jam nut and our screws. And go ahead and finish tightening everything up. He's going to tighten his jam nut here and his set screws here. Now we're going to install the plastic shield that protects the top of the chain. You got your two screws here with the kit. And after installing your plastic shield we're going to put the tire and the seat back in the cart and we're ready to go out for a test drive. Again, we want to shift our cart from forward, come to a complete stop, shift it in reverse, be sure there's no grinding. If, there, if you grind in either direction, we need to tighten for reverse or loosen for forward.